Hey everyone, my name's Rowan, and today we're going to take a quick look at how you can keep track of your spending in Azure. It's really important when using cloud services like Azure that you keep track of all your costs because they can really start to rack up quickly. There are certain resources on there that you might not necessarily think are going to use a lot up, and they can actually cost a lot more than you think they do, especially if you leave things running or you configure things wrong. You might set stuff up with more compute power than it needs, and that can start to really add up. We're going to look at this, first of all, in Azure Cost Management. And then second of all, we're going to look at a tool I found recently called InfraCost, um, which lets you get a rough idea of how much something's going to cost through pull requests. So starting off on the Azure homepage, let's go to the menu on the side. We're going to scroll all the way down and go to cost management and billing. We're going to click on cost management and then we're on cost analysis here at the side. Now, this is the default view it gives you. We're actually quickly going to change the date period because I want to show you the forecasting stuff. And when I'm recording this, it's actually like the last day of my billing period. So we can select a custom date range to view our invoice for. So in May, we just need to select basically anything that's today or before uh, and any sort of end date afterwards will be OK. Let's do that. So in this period I've selected, we can see our current costs um, highlighted by the, the dark green bar here. And then it's going to forecast our costs over the period. So it defaults to your billing period, which is typically a month. And this is going to show us basically what it expects us to use in that time frame. And then as you add more resources um, or change a configuration, this is going to go up. As you saw, we can filter by date. We can also add other kinds of filters um, based on sort of all kinds of different things here. Um, your, your pricing model. Personally, I would typically want to filter on resource, maybe resource group um, more than anything else. But if you go down here, you could actually see uh, broken down by service, location, resource group, um, where all your spendings are. So at the moment, I don't actually have um, lots of stuff going on here. But the more sort of services, locations, resource groups you have, it's going to show more things on this chart. Um, and then you can select which one to drill down it. So if we go to our container registry on the service name, and we can look at basically all of our container registries. And then it's going to show us the breakdown specifically for that. As I say, one of the things I do really like is doing it by resource group because you can actually look at all the different resources in the resource group and see which ones of them are costing more than others. So there's not a lot going on here. I would typically expect container registry to be one of the highest ones based on the stuff I've got at the moment. When you create a new resource, it can take up to a week for it to show in the cost analysis here. And if you've created a new subscription, it can take up to two days for your subscription to even show up here as well. Um, so it's kind of like an ongoing thing. You don't always necessarily get a quick up to date um, response of how much your cost is going to be, um, but this is definitely worth looking at over time. One of the other important things on this is on the left hand side, you've got advisor recommendations. And if you go to that, I haven't got any on here at the moment, but if I go to see a list here, it could start telling me about the different types of cost recommendations it will make, and it will tell you the impact of how important your this recommendation is. And it will also give a rough cost estimate of how much money you could save by making its recommendations, which is really, really helpful. However, because this isn't necessarily so quick and because we might, as a developer, want to control or see our cost um, changes or recommendations closer to our actual code in the process we go through, I'm actually going to look at this tool called InfraCost, which someone recommended to me recently. So if we go over to their page, and uh, this is the dashboard it gives you. Um, this is just some other stuff I was playing around with. If we go to repos and hit add repos, this is actually the kind of screen it's going to give you when you first um, sign in and you haven't got any repos set up. So we get to pick uh, from these different integrations. And I think there's actually more than this, but we just want GitHub app for now. And it's going to let us pick from all of our repos in GitHub. It does do a little connection thing and um, permissions the first time you do this. So we're going to select InfraCost test, and it's highlighted here that it knows that there's some Terraform involved. So if we then hit next, um, we don't have any private Git modules. We don't have any private registry modules. We don't need any additional environment variables. If you do need to select yes for some of these, there is some additional setup you might need to do. Um, there is pretty good documentation for all of this. And then this whole thing is driven through pull requests. So we're going to leave this on the default here. It's going to post a comment in pull requests when Terraform has changes. Now, as far as I'm aware, it only really works at the moment through Terraform. Um, but that's OK, because Terraform is really highly used and it's really easy to use as well. If you haven't used Terraform for your infrastructure as code, I would highly recommend giving it a shot. So we're going to hit complete setup. 
and it's added the repo. And now, in order to get your cost estimate, you have to actually make a pull request on the repo itself. So we're going to go to the repo. So over in pull requests, we'll click on new pull request, and we need to select a branch. So we're going to go to test adding. And now the changes I made in here are actually in a Terraform file. So this is how it picks up and I estimates what the cost changes are going to be. So we've got a container registry, and then we've got a container instance or container group. Um, it didn't really seem to pick this up very well. I'm not entirely sure why, um, but the container registry itself, it will show the cost changes for. So when we hit create pull request, and we'll go to view pull request. Now this has actually found a pull request I made earlier for it, but what it does is it will comment on your pull request the cost difference it thinks it's found. So it thinks that adding a container registry is going to increase my cost by $5 a month. If you click on this output here, it actually gives you the breakdown specifically for these different resources. Um, and it's given us some little sort of cost indications here. Um, obviously, depending on how much we use the registry, it could um, differ in what the cost is. And it's sort of highlighting that here, but the base cost is going to be about $5. Now, one other thing to note in here is it says $5, but I feel like that's probably a rough estimation. You know, the stuff in Azure doesn't seem to be as specific as that. It could be to do with the, the dollar to pound conversion I'm getting, but at least take it with a grain of salt and understand that it's giving you a rough estimation. And as we said before, there's extra costs in here of the different ways you could use it. Like if you're storing more, if you're accessing it more, that kind of stuff, depending on the resource, can change what the cost looks like. So there you go. This is just a quick way to show you a couple of places you can check your costs um, but more importantly, this video is to start helping you think about the fact that you need to manage your costs as you get onto bigger projects and use more resources and different types of resources that you might not be used to. Your costs can change quite drastically. So it's important that you keep that in mind when you're developing and track it and notify yourself as much as you possible when some of that stuff changes and particularly such as with the sort of budget forecasting where it might hit that threshold. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching.